preparing for today's practice to bring ourselves to a state of calm composure into Dasana, mountain posture, grounding your feet, making your connection with the earth beneath you, whilst rising up, creating space internally and externally, and raising your stature to the crown of your head and beyond, softening the skin on your face, especially around your cheeks, your eyes and your forehead, relaxing the mouth, unclenching the teeth and softening the neck and the throat muscles. Close the eyes at this moment in time so that you can tune in, so that you may connect with your flow of breath to gain better understanding and experience of it. You may feel the weight shifting within the soles of your feet, connecting with that balance within your feet, adjusting and adapting and distributing your total body mass into the four corners of your two feet, allowing the toes to remain soft and relaxed at all times. And then open the eyes. So continuing our progression of finding great poise, balance and coordination, we'll now transfer our body weight into our left foot. We'll draw our right foot away from the mat and without looking down, we'll draw our right knee and thigh and shin up towards our torso and we'll bring the fingers around the front of the shin to link them and connect. We'll keep, the we'll keep the head and shoulders above the hips. We'll stay focused and concentrated, possibly taking our eyes to a point on the wall in front of us to steady our focus there. Allow the breath to flow and then gently release. Again, just a transference of weight from one foot to the other and staying in that nice uplifting alignment without looking down. Breathe in and draw the left knee in towards your chest and bring your linked fingers around the shin. Rise up, stay tall. Ensure the standing leg is strong and activated, engaged, the knee lifting. And then release. Another breath in, let's transfer to the other side, making it a fluid transference. Just check in around the body, see if there's any pockets of tension you may be holding on to and that you could disperse through your exhalations. Let's release our grip around the shin now and grip underneath the hamstring. A nice deep breath in and as you breathe out, straighten that right leg. Stay focused as you release that right leg and let the hands dro drop beside you as you slowly lower the right foot to the floor. This is really engaging the muscles of the leg, especially uh, the quadriceps here, uh, the biggest muscle group in the body. Let's breathe into the other side. So we're still focused on that spot in front of us as we draw the left knee in towards the trunk of our body and clasp around the shin. And then we release that clasp to take grip at the back of the leg underneath the hamstring. And then on an exhalation, we make extension through that left leg and we release the hands away. And then with control, we consciously lower the leg and return 
to bring in our total body weight into two feet. We're going to practice the archer now. And if you think about an archer, they have great precision and focus. So keep your focus here. Find that spot on the wall in front of you. Keep looking at it whilst you breathe and allow the mind to send the messages to the body telling it what to do. So from Tadasana, we're going to take the weight into the left foot and we're going to bend the right knee and connect the right hand with the right foot. See if you can draw the knees side to side now, which will give a lovely stretch throughout the quadriceps. Now, if you find that you do need some assistance here, then maybe have a chair beside you that you could hold on to, or a wall that you can place your hand to give you some support. And just practice in that lower realm until you find that you really do have the balance to come into the centre, so that you can then bring your left hand round to meet with the right hand collecting that right foot. Breathe in and rise up, make space. Exhale, you're going to gently straighten the arms by kicking the heel away from the buttocks, by doming the chest and the heart space forward. Archer. Breathe. And then come back through the position with the grace you went in. Let's go on the other side. So again, begin by utilising a chair or a wall for support so that you can get the lower part of the position, the foundation, nice and strong. Let's breathe in and bend the left knee, capturing the left foot in the left hand. And then see if you can draw knee alongside knee and have a tilt of the pelvis. So be aware if you've got your chest and your buttocks sticking out at the moment, can you just straighten up, get your head and shoulders over your hips. And just spend some time practicing here, breathing, accommodating the posture until you feel that you are able to bring that right hand round to connect with the left hand on the left foot. And then a nice deep inhalation as you create space internally, as you lift the flesh externally, and then begin to straighten the arms, kick the left heel away from the buttocks, dome the chest forward, open the heart space, breathe. Avoid collapse in the stomach muscles. Pull the belly button towards the base of the spine. And then return to the central position. A nice deep breath in. And a long, conscious breath out. Now let's step the feet about three and a half or four feet apart. You may even like them wider if you feel that you do have the stretch. We're going to go into the forward bend as we practiced yesterday, only today we're going to take up a different hand gesture. First of all, we'll repeat what we done yesterday and then we'll progress. So breathe in, take the hands to shoulder level, breathe out, and stretch, reach into the fingertips. Feel the energy flowing up through the soles of the feet, up the legs. The legs uh, retain their energy, their rising upness. And you lift up through the torso. And then as you exhale, you begin to hinge forward. So you move consciously and slowly enabling you to take your head and neck in a natural alignment with your spine. So you're not trying to hold the head up and you're not looking down too far. 
You should get to halfway and have a nice tabletop position. And then make further space. Lift those hips away from the femur bones and hinge over. Taking your hands to where they feel comfortable, whether that is on your upper thighs, on your shins, on your ankles, or if you're able to grip the outside edge of the feet. A restorative position for the heart. And then let's bring those hands to a line in between the legs. So the fingertips are aligned with the toes. A nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, bend those elbows back so that the trunk of the body drops centrally between the legs. And then you can let go of the crown of the head and it's looking to come down between the palms of the hands the space you have between the hands. And then you breathe in and you straighten the arms. And then just raise the chin, look out a few feet in front of you, and then exhale, drop forward. Keep those shoulders, elbows and wrists on the same plane. So it's almost like two railroad tracks and they are all aligned and then you breathe in straighten the arms raise the chin look out in front of you two or three feet exhale lower and then bring the hands to the outer edge of the ankles engage the legs pull the tummy in have the chin on the chest as you restack the bones of the spine and return to an upright position. So let's go again with that but with the arms in a different gesture. Breathe in, raise the hands to shoulder level. Exhale, stretch and extend. To your next exhalation, rotate the hands forward so that the palms begin to face the ceiling and you've rotated from the shoulder. You haven't just twisted at the wrists or the forearms. It's a full and complete move from the origin up in the shoulders. You then drop the hands behind you, bring the tips of the fingers together and if you can, Bring the palms and the heels of the hands together. Don't judge yourself if you're not here at this present practice. You might even find that you prefer to hold alternate elbows in hands. This is a good starting point. What you want to always look at doing now is as you're breathing in and exhaling, shoulders back taking the shoulder blades towards each other, which enables those elbows to go back a little and for the heels of the hands and the palms of the hands to begin to connect. There is no rush to get there. And then a nice breath in, create that space again. Zip up internally, pubis all the way up to the breastbone and then hinge forward. Again, moving slowly so that you're consciously aware of your alignment. You might have one shoulder dropping down lower than another. Do you need to adapt and adjust that? Do you need to really link in with the upper neck and the connection with the head? Extend through there and make it nice and straight. A smooth transition as you hinge forward, taking yourself to the point that's comfortable for you. Ensuring that you have that lovely extension up through the legs, from the ankles up to the hips, that you are lifting the flesh, all parts of the body assisting for the whole experience of the movement, the position,
and then really having the abdominals kick in, grow strong, to lift the trunk of the body upright once again. Nice and gently releasing those hands down. You might want to just give them a little bit of a twist inwards and outwards to free the wrists. And then heel and toe the feet, jump step or walk them together to bring yourself to Tadasana once again. And from here, we'll take ourselves down into an upright kneeling position, preparing ourselves for Paragasana, the gait posture. So Paragasana is going to mobilize our hips, loosen them, open them. It's going to get us attuned to the sides of our body and give us a real lovely stretch throughout. Paragasana, the gate. We are opening the gate. So let's rise up through the trunk of our body, lifting through the front and the backs of the legs too, ensuring that our body weight is dispersed into our knees, shins and front of feet. Let's think about the right hip now as we breathe in and create space there so that when we exhale, we can swing it out to the side, opening the gate. Let's bring our right hand to rest on our inner right thigh. Let's rise up and create space. And then as we exhale, we can begin the descent. Now be aware how you want your right foot to be placed. You might like it, the toes turning in a little. You might be able to turn the, the toes out to align with the hip. It all depends on the comfort for you. So you're slowly going to journey the hand down the leg. And you want to ensure that that left shoulder remains above the right. There's going to be every possibility that your ego is going to want your hand to go all the way down to your foot. And you'll round through the shoulders, you'll collapse that left shoulder. And you really want to avoid that because you will be missing the true nourishment of the posture. It's better to be at this level here than down here. Because again, like we found in Trikonasana, if we get to a point where we are well aligned and focus on the breath, observe it, you'll notice that you're... Breathe in and feel this lift, and then when you breathe out, you'll be actually able to actually lower a little further. And that's why constant practice, a dedication, is what works best here. Because as you continue your practice, you continue to progress, grow, deepen into positions. Let's take that left hand and let's draw it up the left side of the body, almost as if we're really feeling that energy shift. And then take our left hand over and out to the side. Unclench the teeth. Breathe. See if you can get uh, your head and neck naturally aligned. It's a case of discovering and exploring where best placed your head and neck feel. You, you, you'll, you'll know when it's right because it will just feel comfortable. And then you'll breathe in, move fluidly through the centre of the position and then bring your left hand to rest in line with your left knee and your right foot and rise up through the right side of the body and draw the right arm over and across and then extend those fingertips to where wall and ceiling meet. And you can look up to focus just on the flesh on the palm of your right hand. And then just as fluidly you return to that central upright kneeling position. Take a breath in 
and a conscious breath out. And then we'll go on the other side. So we're now relaxing in that left hip. And as we take a breath in, we're thinking of lifting the hip up away from the femur bone to allow space for more supple movement. Placing your left foot in the most comfortable position for you and bringing the left hand on the left inner thigh, rising up, creating elevation and then smoothly taking that left hand down the inside of the left leg, keeping that right shoulder stacked above the left, keeping the teeth unclenched, staying in communication with the core of you, your stomach muscles, so you haven't allowed them to collapse. You've still got one eye on them. And then let's bring that right hand as smooth across the right side of the body and over. And again, you're working toward finding where the head and neck feel comfortable, naturally aligned with the extension of your spine. And your right shoulder is above your left. You breathe into the position to really have that full body experience. And then you breathe in, fluidly rising up and over to bring the right hand on the mat, aligned with the right knee and the left foot. And the left hand smooths its way up, across and over to reach the fingers to where wall and ceiling meet. And you can turn and focus on the flesh on the palm of your left hand. And then again, with that graceful lucidness, you bring yourself back to an upright kneeling position and then bring the buttocks to the heels of the feet. You might like to put a cushion or a folded blanket between your buttocks and the heels of your feet if that's more comfortable. Even maybe having something underneath the knees. And then you turn the hands and place the palms one on top of each other. Point of thumbs touching. And close the eyes. Pose of contemplation. A time for reflection, a time to absorb the nutriments, or rather the nutrients and the nourishment of the position. Just watch and observe the body. You'll feel where it has worked most. You'll know where you have created new space. You'll sense the engagement of the muscles and the flesh. Draw this in. Allow this new strengthen in this development of awareness. Allow it to grow inside you as a human being you have great potential. The mind and its power is infinite and you have total control over that. You can utilize it for great good, to help make this existence for us all a much greater, fulfilling experience. So stay tuned in, continue 
path of exploration of the self. And bring the hands to your heart, the place of all truth. Find today your gratitude for everything you have, for all that is good and abundant around you. Recognize it and acknowledge it. And pass it on to others and stay safe in the knowledge that yoga is good for all. <laughs>